example demonstrates the proximity effect. This phenomenon results in the increase in low frequency content whenever the source gets closer to the microphone. What's happening is, the closer the source gets to the microphone, the more the reflection from the source combines out of phase with the direct sound. So really, high frequency is diminishing or canceling to the point where it's overwhelmed by lows. The interesting point here is that the proximity effect is less dramatic when using the omnidirectional pattern than either the cardioid or bidirectional. The fact that a cardioid pattern rejects sounds from off-axis increases the focus on the negative high-frequency phase interaction at the front of the mic. The smaller pickup pattern on the bidirectional mic increases its focus and proximity effect. Now, as I move closer to and further from the mic, listen to the sound difference. When I play the guitar and move closer to and further from the mic, listen to the changing effect it has on the intimacy and space around the sound. Sometimes you achieve the most intimate sound with the source close to an omnidirectional microphone. Other times you can use the boominess of the close mic cardioid or bidirectional pattern to help fill the void in a mix. In fact, many microphones include a bass roll-off, a high-pass filter, just to compensate for the proximity effect. As you move closer and the sound becomes boomy and out of control, simply select the bass roll-off to compensate. The key is in attaining the knowledge of how these different techniques affect the sound of your recordings, then using that knowledge to your creative benefit. These tests are all performed using the Shure KSM44 large diaphragm condenser mic in cardioid, omnidirectional, and bidirectional configuration. First, cardioid. Now omnidirectional. and bi-directional. And finally, two more tests. Cardioid without the bass roll off. And cardioid with the bass roll off. <laughs> 